So here we are at the um, uh, Ileon Paul Fencing Centre, um, and I thought, uh, as we were doing some filming for the uh, for the Olympic uh, Broadcasting Association, uh, I have a chance to show you some old masks, and these masks are from the British uh, Fencing Museum, run by Malcolm Fair. So. Um, I thought we'd uh, have a look at them and just see how the technology and the strength and everything has changed over the years. So starting off, this will be a mask from about the 1860s, 1880. Um, it has a, a, a spring case that goes over the back of the head. Um, it's very thin. It's not really meant to prevent really strong bro blows, it's just to stop people losing their eyes. And so some leather here, which is, uh, which is uh, falling apart slightly. Now, when we get into the uh, 1900s, uh, 1910, it's got even more protection around it. It's slightly bigger, it's slightly better protected with, um, this it was a very fine leather, uh, which is hand sewn over some cloth. But again, it's fairly weak at the sides. Here's a mask that was made in the 1930s. Um, it's made by our firm, Leon Paul Equipment, 18 Monmouth Street. Uh, the various elements are sewn to a hand stitch together still. There's hand stitching going on. Uh, the mesh is again fairly weak. It's quite easy to, to depress. Uh, it, even even uh, when it was first made, it will have been this week. So it hasn't lost strength um, during the, the years. It's just not a particularly strong mesh. And again, it's non-electric fencing. So the fencing was much more controlled than it is today. And therefore, there wasn't a requirement for this mesh to be extremely strong. This is a, another mask, 1930s, Leon Paul equipment. Uh, some of the padding has got slightly more advanced. Uh, this is a plastic rather than a cloth. But again, it's hand sewn. There's a spring case to hold it on the back of the, uh, the head and a relatively lightly padded bib protecting just under the neck. And again, quite wide mesh, quite easy to see through, uh, but not very strong. By the 1990s, there's a requirement for a see-through mask, which is a mask with a, a clear, um, panel in it and these were being sold for about 10-12 years. However, because some of our fellow manufacturers didn't follow the regulations, didn't follow the rules that existed, some of them cracked in use and eventually the uh, International Federation decided uh, that they weren't safe enough in their current form. Uh, however, they still very keen to have a, a transparent mask so that the camera people can see the fences inside. And at some point, I'm sure, um, we will return to a, a visor with most of the face uh, visible to people outside. I mean, as I say to most people I see, do you still think in a hundred years time, we'll still be looking through a bit of stainless steel mesh? And in general, people agree, probably not. And I think that's exactly right. We come along to the latest uh, and most modern version of our mask, stainless steel, has a contour contour fit um, back, it goes to the back of the end, which has a double-sided Velcro. And now we have a mask made up of six different sections or parts which you can take off and replace and wash and then put back together. And uh, that's our most modern mask. And then finally, um, just a sample of, uh, for the kids mask, plastic mask, which is molded in one piece. It has a stainless steel front in it. And this is used by, plastic, uh, by kids when they're training with plastic foils and when they first start fencing.